Before I start going through the ways in which the endocrine system is used to regulate metabolism, I think it would be worth your time to take a quick review over basic cellular metabolism. Now keep in mind, this video is a review of cellular metabolism, not formal instruction on the subject. So in about six minutes or so, I'm going to run through all of the high notes of basic cellular metabolism. So keep in mind, if you need something slower and more thorough, you need to look at some of my other metabolism videos for that. So let's dive right into our review. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, serves as the cellular energy currency. That's the molecule that is used in the cell to be catabolized to provide the energy to do most of the work done in the cell. ATP is produced through the catabolism of other organic molecules, carbohydrates, amino acids, and, and fats. And the energy from those other organic molecules during catabolism is transferred in the form of electrons to NAD and FAD, turning them into NADH and FADH2. These molecules, which carry high energy electrons, will transfer them into the electron transport chain of the mitochondria to provide for final ATP production. Carbon dioxide during certain steps will be produced as a waste product. As you'll recall, these organic macromolecules are by definition composed of carbon, and so as we tear them apart, carbon dioxide will be produced in some steps as waste. So here's our cell. There's the interstitial fluid and the cytosol just to orient you. And most cellular metabolism begins with carbohydrate catabolism, specifically working with glucose. Glucose is taken into the cell from an external environment and put through the process of glycolysis in the cytoplasm. Glycolysis is a multi-step process in which glucose is converted into pyruvate. A small amount of ATP is produced along the way, as is a little bit of NADH. Now, depending on the cell's environment, pyruvate can either undergo fermentation when oxygen is limiting, becoming lactic acid or lactate as a waste product, or if oxygen is plentiful, the pyruvate can instead be shuttled into the mitochondrion where it can undergo oxidative metabolic processes. These happen specifically in the matrix component of the mitochondrion. So once pyruvate has worked its way into the mitochondrial matrix, it will then undergo additional chemical reactions, beginning with oxidation into acetyl-CoA. And then acetyl-CoA will be fed into the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. As you watch acetyl-CoA run through the multiple steps of the citric acid cycle, you should note that a small amount of ATP is being produced large amounts of NADH and FADH2 are being produced, and six carbon dioxide molecules are produced from that single starting glucose. So we started with a six carbon glucose and ended with six CO2 molecules. Most of the energy that was in glucose that's still available is not in the ATP that we produced, but rather in the NADH and FADH2. And again, as I mentioned at the very beginning, it's stored in the form of high energy electrons. Those electrons are going to be fed into the electron transport chain, which is a series of proteins found in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So as we move over to the inner membrane and look inside it, we see the electron transport chain, a series of proteins within the inner membrane, three of which are proton or hydrogen ion pumps. They move hydrogen ions from the mitochondrial matrix to the inner membrane space on the other side. And they are powered, as you can see here, by moving electrons that are provided by NADH and FADH2. So as we watch NADH and FADH2 provide their electrons to the electron transport chain, we can see the pumps pumping protons across the membrane and accumulating in the inner membrane space. Along the way, notice that the electrons are unloaded from the electron transport chain when they connect with oxygen, and oxygen gas becomes water. So oxygen serves as the terminal acceptor of electrons for the electron transport chain. Notice off to the side we have that other protein present that wasn't part of the electron transport chain. That protein is ATP synthase, and it's an enzyme complex that lets the protons move through and uses the energy as they move through to generate ATP. 
So if we take a closer look at ATP synthase as a molecule, we can see it has a fairly elaborate structure, but as hydrogen ions pass through the channel component of the protein, additional parts of the molecule rotate, and we have this turbine-like structure that converts that rotational energy into chemical energy that forms ATP. So to summarize, ATP is the cellular energy currency, and it's generated through the catabolism of organic molecules like carbohydrates. In glycolysis, which is the first step in this, pro this process, glucose is converted into pyruvate, and depending on oxygen availability, that pyruvate can either be anaerobically fermented in the cytosol to produce lactate or lactic acid as waste, or it can be aerobically metabolized in the mitochondria. When we go that route, the pyruvate is oxidized and then fed into the citric acid cycle, which is going to produce carbon dioxide as the waste, and large amounts of electron energy will be harvested in the molecules NADH and FADH2. That electron energy will be harvested when those electrons are transferred into the electron transport chain of the mitochondrial inner membrane, which contains proteins that act as proton or hydrogen ion pumps that create a hydrogen ion gradient from the intermembrane space into the mitochondrial matrix. Oxygen serves as the terminal acceptor for electrons in the electron transport chain, and then the enzyme complex ATP synthase allows the hydrogen ions to flow along their gradient and uses that energy stored in that gradient to produce large amounts of ATP by adding ADP to phosphate molecules.